Once again, good morning to all of our viewing and listening audience. I thank you for your continued support. Lo, these many months that we have been coming to you virtually. Again, the Lord's name be praised to all of our worship participants and for those who work behind the scenes in ensuring that this broadcast is made possible. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Permit the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart be found acceptable in your sight. For Lord, you are my rock and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. This morning uh, provides uh, a variety of themes in which we have to celebrate and to give thanks and praise to God. As has been said, it's a new year. And soon we will share in the sacrament of Holy Communion, the first for the year 2021. With the new year, it offers all who would desire new opportunities for growth. Some perhaps have followed traditions in making New Year's resolutions. Mine is the same every year to do better. As I have said in the past, there are a variety of ways in which many women, preachers of the gospel, develop, receive inspiration for sermon preparation. In the Methodist tradition, the methodical process, we are encouraged to utilize the lectionary, which is a process, a collection of scriptural passages that gives specific in emphasis to the particular liturgical season. From inspiration from our daily experiences, be they personal or current or local events or in some other part of the world. In preparation this morning for this hour, there is a multiplicity of subject matter from which one could develop a sermon. However, with all of the thoughts racing in every direction in my mind, I've made my task of narrowing it down to this specific topic. It has made it most challenging. When I consider 2020, that some of 2020 has spilled over into the new year, there has been but one phrase that has resonated in my spirit, and are we yet alive? In an effort to provide some support to this topic, I will call your attention to th three passages of scripture, one from the Old Testament, one from the Acts of the Apostles, and lastly from the Gospel. In the Old Testament, in the book of Daniel, chapter 3, verse 13, we find these words. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude toward them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual. These three brave young men, refusal to comply with the decree which was contrary to their religious beliefs. And even though repeated efforts to persuade them failed, therefore the authorities considered their actions as one of being disobedient. But in actuality, it was a testament of their faith in God. Consequently, they were scheduled for an immediate execution. Their mode of killing those whom had been convicted was placing them in the fiery furnace. And as stated by Daniel, seven times hotter than normal. This beloved reminds us much like today, those who believe that they have the power in deciding whether one lives or dies, enjoys having people put to death. In 2020, we have witnessed the various methods used to execute people from lethal injection cutting off one's breathing by placing one's knee over a victim's neck or placing one 
in a chokehold. Acts chapter 28, verses 3 through 6. Paul gathered a pile of brushwood, and as he put it on the fire, a viper driven out by the heat fastened itself on his hand. And when the islanders saw the snake hanging from his hand, they said to each other, this man must be a murderer. For though he escaped from the sea, the goodness justice has not allowed him to live. But Paul shook the shake snake off into the fire and suffered no ill effects. The people expected him to swell up and to suddenly fall dead. But after waiting a long time and seeing nothing unusual happen to him, they changed their minds and said, that he was a God. The Apostle Paul, having survived many attempts to kill him, is one of 200 men shipwrecked on the Isle of Malta. When a fire was built to warm him and others, a snake bent him on the hand, and those present made assumptions why he had been bitten, much in the same manner that thousands have been subjected to in 2020 driving and jogging while black and entering your own home while black and the list is unending. Inequitable housing and health care, the disparities in legal system, for example, two mothers taking steps of warning their children to have the best education measures that are provided that were not lawful. One paid a large sum and the decision maker and the other merely listed a different zip code. When discovered, one mother was sentenced to two months incarceration while the other mother re received five years. And the only difference between them is the color of their, skin, of their skin. Beloved as oppressed people, we have always had to endure double standards in the legal system. The unrealistic requirements of voter registration and implementing acts of voter suppression, discarding ballots, using the court system, challenging our votes. And even today, as we await the inauguration of the 46th president of the United States, already there is a mounting effort to dismiss the votes of millions of America. However, beloved, we are accustomed to being oppressed. We are accustomed to having things. And that is why we can say, are we yet alive? In Matthew 27, verses 27b and 31. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put him on a put on him a scarlet robe and then twisted together a crown of thorns and placed it on his head. Then they put a staff in his right hand. Then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spit on, it, on him and took the staff and struck him on the head repeatedly. And after they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put on his own clothes. Then they led him away to crucify him. Beloved, I know some of you are saying perhaps it is strange that on one Sunday we talk about the birth of Christ and now we're talking about the death of Christ. However, you must remember in Luke 2, 34b and 35, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and the sword will pierce your own souls too. For centuries, there has been debate about the hue of Christ in spite of the fact that in the book of Revelation, he is described as having hair like wool and skin like bronze. In addition, when one considers the manner that Christ was treated by the legal system, there can be no doubt 
in anyone's mind that Jesus was a man of color and not Eurocentric images displayed in homes and in many houses of worship. When you look at it, he was pierced. He was, he was stabbed for our transgressions. He, he was crushed for our iniquities, our injustices, our crime. The punishment that brought us peace was on him and by his wounds we are healed. He was brow beaten and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter to be massacred as a sheep before his shearers. He remained, he did not open his mouth. Beloved, there are very few ethnic groups that had to and still endure various forms of abuses can be described in, in these terms. And though not exclusively, but primarily people of color. When we consider Jesus' final days on earth, having to go from one courtroom to another, the attacks on his character and the physical abuse to his body, forced to carry his own cross. And when he fell down, another black man assisted him and if that were not enough to indicate their disdain for him, they placed him between two thieves. Now, if that does not sound like the kind of treatment leveled on people of color, I don't know what power, what planet you are. Beloved, for many of us, we have who have served as delegates to the annual conference will immediately recognize the words of my topic as the first opening hymn of the worship service. It embodies a colleague or a friend who we've not seen an entire year. And although there have been many troubles and conflicts since we last assembled, we are able to embrace virtually each other in a spirit of Christian fellowship that we share in Jesus Christ, our savior. Charles Wesley, the brother of John, the founder of Methodism in America, wrote in 1749, a collection of hymns and sacred poems. And in the year of 1780, determined that this hymn would be the opening hymn of an annual meeting later called an annual conference. Thus, the tradition continues. Beloved, in each reference I've made today, it was the hope and the intent of the oppressor with the Hebrew boys, the apostle Paul, and last but not least, Jesus Christ, that they would not survive their experience. However, in each instance, God interceded. Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego not only survived the flames, but when they emerged from the furnace, their clothes didn't even have the smell of smoke. The apostle Paul, though bitten by the snake, he survived. And finally, the greatest example of all time, Jesus Christ, amid everything leveled against him, God raised him from the dead. Beloved, as we begin this new year, and as people of faith, we have by the grace and mercy of Almighty God survived everything that people have thrown at us with the intent of destroying us and eradicating us. We have survived all forms of death, not so much in the literal sense, but attempts to kill our hope, destroy our peace and our joy and eliminate our love have failed. We have survived much in 2020, not on our own strength, but by the power and grace of a loving God. We have survived the vicious acts of white supremacy. We have survived the Trumpian politics and all have failed. And therefore, on this, the first communion Sunday in the new year 2021, 
we can lift our voices and say, and are we yet alive and see each other's face, glory and praise to Jesus give for his redeeming grace, preserved by power divine to full salvation here. Again in Jesus' praise we join and in his sight appear. What troubles have we seen? What conflicts have we passed? Fightings within and fears without since we of symbol alas, but thanks be to God, but out of all has brought us by his love and still he doth his help afford and hides our life above. And are we yet alive? And we keep on going and keep on going because God is on our side. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and lift up the light and love of his countenance upon you and give you peace this brand new year, tomorrow and in the days to come. In Jesus' name I pray. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. Now, perhaps there's someone present under, the, under my listening voice or the viewing audience. You want to start this year off right. What better decision you can make than by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If you've not saved, if you've not prayed the prayer of salvation, I encourage you to dial 410-922. 3286 and follow the prompts and there'll be someone who will reach out to you and will share with you the prayer of salvation. And the Bible says in part, if you believe in your heart that God has raised his son from the dead, you shall be saved. Likewise, beloved, if you are without a church family, again, what better way to start the new year then by uniting with our church family. Likewise, follow dial that same number, follow the prompts, and there'll be people who will walk you through the process of uniting with our church family. Continue to trust God, continue to remain prayerful, continue to be safe in adhering to the directives of the scientific and medical community. And keep saying all week long, and are we yet alive to see each other's face? Glory and praise to Jesus give for his redeeming grace. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, and God bless you. Let us share together the general confession. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Make of all things, judge of all humankind. We acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings the remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in the newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the people said, Amen. All glory, power, and honor to you, almighty God, holy Father, creator of heaven and earth, who did make us in your own image. And when we fell into sin, you of your tender mercy did give your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. And who made there by his, of his one obligation? once offered a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world. 
and instituted and commanded us to continue this perpetual memorial of his precious death until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave to them saying, this is my body which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he said to them, drink this all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you do in remembrance of me. Therefore, with this cup and with this bread, representing the blood that our Lord and Savior offered for us, we await his coming in the promised feast. Gracious God, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Bless, sanctify these gifts with your Holy Spirit, and bless us to your service, that we may faithfully receive in unity and peace the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. The body of Christ broken for you and for me. I feast on it with faith and with thanksgiving. His blood, more precious than that of ram or bullock or any animal sacrifice, I drink. And in my heart, I am thankful. Now, my brothers and my sisters, take the cup, take the wafer, which represents his body. Feast on it with love and thanksgiving in your heart. In the same manner, take the cup, which represents the blood shed from the cross of Calvary for the remission of our sins. Drink ye all of it. And as often as you do, it is in remembrance of him. You have renewed your covenant with the Almighty. Now rise, go in peace, and may the peace of God go with you. And now may we take a few moments and engage in virtual fellowship. And always remember, and are we yet alive? God bless you.